Whether you have a full-sized Showtime rotisserie and barbecue oven, or one of the smaller compact units, your optional accessories and features may vary a bit, but this instructional video applies to all models. The Platinum Digital Full-Size Model, the Black Jog Dial Timer Model, the popular full-size model from Ron's TV show, and the newer Showtime rotisseries, the smaller ones, the Compact Plus and the Junior Showtime. Good Housekeeping Magazine tested Showtime and reported, the product is well designed and easy to use, and they gave it nine stars out of 10. Congratulations on having the finest rotisserie ever made. These were created by the American inventor, Ron Popeil. Ron was recently recognized as one of the 25 most influential people who has changed the way we eat, cook, and think about food. Use your rotisserie and make delicious chickens, ducks, pork roasts, hamburgers, veal chops, salmon steaks, fresh trout, teriyaki kebabs, leg of lamb, vegetable baskets, chicken wings, turkey, Cornish game hens, sausages, country rotisserie ham, chicken cordon bleu, and one of Ron's favorites, baby back ribs. This is the unit assembled. The glass door is pulled down by the knobs on the top. Put it in the under position when you're loading food and unloading food. This is the drip tray and grate cover. The spit wheel assembly. And in the back behind the heating element is a heat reflector. It easily comes out and you'd want to wash this once in a while. Just be sure it's always in the unit when the unit is in operation. To replace it, put it in behind the heating coil very simply, let it fall into place. While the heat reflector is always necessary in the full-size Showtime units, it is not necessary and it is not included with the smaller units, such as the Compact Plus and the Junior. This is the spit wheel assembly. It goes in and first into a rest area and then back into one of the cooking areas, A or B. The grate cover goes on top of the drip tray. They can go in either way, as shown here. Again, never operate the unit without the drip tray and the grate cover in place. To attach the door on the front, first put the pin in the right side. Then gently lift up and insert the pin in the left side and let it down. That's all you do to put the door in place. It easily removes for cleaning. Now it's your turn, Ron. You tell them about the spit wheel assembly. This is the spit loading base that comes with every unit. I'm going to set that on there like so, and I'm going to take the other gear wheel, and I'm just going to match it up. Once they're matched up, you press down and it's ready to go into the rest area. Now let me explain some of the inner parts of the machine here. Over here is the rest area, over here is the A position, and then we have the B position. Now, and in the back, we can see the motor gear. That's what makes everything operate. Now let's go back to the A position. The A position, and I'm going to set it first in the rest area, and then into the A position. All foods work in that A position. Now it's basically for larger foods because if you decide to go to the B position, you lift up, it falls into place, and that will do smaller foods. I'll do that once again. The A position 
does large foods. The B position does smaller foods. There are only two positions in the smaller units, the rest area and the cooking position. Once the food is in, you lift the window up, you set it, and you forget it. Don't take set it and forget it literally. It's only valid if you have read and followed all the instructional material. Notice that we have half hour increments going around the unit. It's a three hour timer and it turns off automatically. Now you'll notice down the bottom here, it's in the normal rotation. That's right in the middle. That's the heat on and the rotisserie is spinning. If I move it to pause to sear, that allows the heat to stay on, but the rotisserie is not working. It sears all your foods. Of course, if you move it over to no heat rotation, your food is done already, and you turn it to no heat rotation for just five minutes on the timer. That's when the heat is off, but the rotation continues. That'll allow you to let your food rest with all the juices permeating, marinating inside and outside. We'll go back to the normal position. If you own the Platinum Edition with digital controls, it simply works like this. Now we have the hour button right here. I'm gonna touch it and we have one hour and you can see the digital light right there and it will start in just a couple of seconds time. Above it is the minute button and I will give that a press a couple times and you can add on your minutes. The left side is minus minutes and we can take away minutes if we so desire. And of course, we have the off button down over here. That turns it off. Although your machine stops automatically when you're using it. If I wanted to just touch the button again, you will notice that the rotisserie spins a little bit each time I touch it. So you can position anything in there anywhere you want. Now the function button on the top allows you to do the normal rotation. That's heat with the rotation. Of course, I'm going to go to no heat rotation over here, and I'm going to give it uh, a couple of minutes on no heat rotation. Now, what is no heat rotation? No heat rotation is what it says. There's no heat, but the rotisserie is spinning around. Now, the reason I invented that was that I know that when food is done, not everyone is ready to sit down at the table. And so this will keep your food spinning around with the juices flowing, and it'll keep it hot for about a half an hour's time. You never can get those people to sit down at the table when you want them to. And the last button on the side over here is pause to sear. And I'm gonna to touch the function button again. And what'll happen here now is the rotisserie stops, but the heat remains on. It will allow you to sear your food, especially when you're doing steaks and lamb chops in the basket. I'll turn it off and that's all there is to it. If your Showtime machine came with a jog dial timer, it may have some or all of the following features. Unless you have selected another function, the timer automatically goes to normal rotation. You can adjust the cooking time by turning the jog dial up or down. The time appears in large red digital numbers. The three-way button lets you select the following. Normal rotation, where your food rotates and is cooked, or no heat rotation, used for cooling the food before serving while keeping the juices evenly distributed throughout the food, or pause to sear. You position the food in a basket or on the spit rods right in front of, that is facing the heating element, to brown or char the outside. Do one side, reposition the basket or spit rods, and do the other side. Do not try to cook food solely in the pause to sear selection. It will burn. Use it for a few minutes on each side to char the outside of steaks and other foods. Then select normal rotation and set the time to finish cooking. If the machine is accidentally turned off, the three-way selection button has one minute of built-in memory. After one minute, it reverts to normal rotation. The warming feature automatically sets one hour of warming when you push the warm button. 
You can increase or decrease the warming time by turning the jog dial just after you select the warming button. You can set the warm selection while your food is cooking too. Just push the warm button and as the light flashes, jog dial the warming time you desire if it is other than the one hour automatic setting. You did not interrupt your cooking time to set the warming time. Your food will continue to cook and after a few seconds, the timer will again show you the remaining cooking time. Then when cooking is done, it will automatically go to your preset warming time. Note the numbers and orange light both flash during warming. A special position feature. To align the food in front of the heating element or to align it for easy removal from the rotisserie, hold down the off button. This lets you rotate the spit rod assembly without heat or engaging any other feature. Release the off button and it stops rotating. The smaller models have a two hour timer with some or all of the same functions. And here's a helpful hint for the smaller models. You can put a strip of aluminum foil just below the front door on your countertop. It'll collect any moisture or grease, especially from larger foods. Now let me show you how to put the meat on the spit rods. I'm gonna take the meat, I'm gonna set that on the platform like that, and I'm just gonna drive it through like so. Beautiful. I'll put this on one side, and then the other side, snap it down, and then I'll go right into the rest area, and then I'll just slide it over. Next item is just slide it back, and it's ready. Pick it up, set it, turn it on, forget it. And now Ron's going to show us an easy way to tie chickens. You get a bunch of food ties with your machine. Cut that off. Over here I have one wrap around, and over here I have the second wrap around. Now, Jan, I'd like to show the folks how to tie a chicken another way using only one tie. I'm going to take a tie here, and I'm just going to make it a little smaller just by making a little knot in here like so, and trimming it like that. Now, the first thing I do here with the chicken is always turn the chicken over on the breast with the wings away from you. I'm going to take that chicken tie, and I'm going to wrap it around one wing and then the other wing. Give it a twist and it locks the legs in. Once the legs are locked in, I'll turn it back over again and I will put one wing on this side and one wing on the other side. Back over again with the breast on the right side. I'm going to grab my rotisserie rods here and I'm just going to grab the legs with my other hands, keep them together, and I'm just going to angle it down like so and slide it through. Set it on the platform over here, like this. Put the uh, top gear wheel in place. I'll match it up, snap it down, and I will then put it in the rest area. I will center the chicken, slide it back, bring the window up, set it, it is highly unlikely, but if you should see or smell smoke, it's because the food is rubbing against the heating element. This indicates that the meat or poultry is too big or wasn't tied properly, or the food is off-center, lopsided on the spit rods. If this occurs, turn off and unplug your machine. Do not open the glass door. Let it cool down. Then trim or retie your food tightly. And be sure that the food is centered on the spit rod so it always rotates without touching the heating element. Over here I have the spit loading base. I'm going to take the spit rod assembly and just place it right on like so. I'll take the two chai chickens here and all I'll do is drop it on like that. And I'll take the second one and basically do the same thing. Take this and slip it on like one side, 
and then the other. Snap it down. I'll move this over like so, get this out of the way, slide the chickens over, and I'll take a little of this and just sprinkle the lamb on there. That nice? That's going to be really beautiful. Then I will take it and set it in the rest area, slide it back into the position, lift up the window, turn it on, set it, and forget it. Here I have the basket, and of course I have the lid over here. I have four different salmon steaks here. I'm going to take and place one over here and one on this side, and I'll just mesh it in and just slide it over. I'll do this side over here like so. This is pretty darn simple. A child can do it. I have some lemon, and I'll touch that over here, both sides. Sprinkle a little dill on here. Kind of looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Mm hmm I think so. And I'll take the bar over here, and I'm just going to stick it in one side. And it's very important that the fish does not move around on the inside. Now, over here, I'm going to uh, take my platform, and I'll set the unit on like so. Take this over here, and uh, just match it up match it on one side and then the other side and just slide it down like so. It's as simple as that. I'll put the lid on. This is pretty simple. Snap it on. Take it. Set it in the rest area. Slide it back. Lift this up. Set it and forget it. That's all you do to do your step. get this and this and this and this or you have this ring matching up with this ring and this over here matching up with this over here okay. this side over here will go in there and you use the spring side over here and it comes out over here and that kind of locks the food down over here I've got the platform I'll set it down and I'll put this on it like so now over here we have these two. Of course, this guy here matches up with that one over there. All I'm going to do is set it down like so, and down it comes. Perfect. I take the lid, and I'll just slip the lid on like this, and you're ready to go. Important. Always close the basket cover tightly so food cannot move while rotating. Problem. Sometimes the edges of food get burned in the baskets as they go around. Solution? Cut small strips of aluminum foil, fold them in half, and cover the leading edges of the basket. As you see here, you can line both the top and bottom edge with foil. And this will help keep the food from getting burned as it goes around. Here, we're loading chicken wings covered with Ron's barbecue spice. And it's a good idea to load food so the smaller bones go toward the middle of the basket so they have less opportunity to fall out the edges. Looks like this is going to hold about 10 chicken wings. Now when you put the basket on, you have to puncture the foil with the end of the basket. You see, you push it down and then snap the top into place through the foil. To load the basket onto the spit rod, there are two loops at either end. You run the spit rods through the loops in the front and the back on both the top and bottom. Then you snap the lid in place. Now, here's how to make kebabs. The first thing you do is set it in the rest area like so. Now, with every package you get all these shish kebab rods. Let me show you how to use them. You take the shish kebab, and they're done over here. You just slip in one side on that side, and then use the spring to, in fact, snap in. It's as simple as that. I'll put it on one side like that, and then just spring it in. You set it back into the unit. You set the window up. 
hit turn it on, and that's all you do to do shish kebabs. Remember with kebabs, you always put the spring end on the right side because it turns a quarter turn every time the whole wheel assembly goes around. This ensures an even cooking on all sides of your kebabs. Insert the sharp end first, then snap the spring end in place. Keep the meat and vegetables on your kebab rods no more than an inch and a half in diameter so they don't touch each other as they go around. It's very important when you're fixing ribs using the kebab rods that you put the spring ends on the left. That way they don't make a quarter turn every time it goes around. And here's how to use the flavor injector. Mm -hmm. Suck up that juice, like a little lemon juice here. Then I'll take this and I'll jam it in. Just a little shot there. Stick a little shot over in here. A little shot down in here. A little shot in there. Use it all up. Huh? Then I'll just go to the spit rod over here. Slide this in, and all I do is go down and just ram it through like this. I'll set it on the counter over here like that. I'll put the uh, fine thing on over here, snap it down, and lift it, set it in, position it, slide it back. It's as simple as that, and then we just set it. And now Ron shows how to tie a turkey. Now over here I've tied the wings one time, and I've also tied the wings. This keeps the wings nice and tight and close. Of course, you have to also tie the legs, and you just use a regular uh, square knot, which I'll use over here, and we'll tie it really good. Always use four strings when tying a turkey. Two on the wings, and two on the legs. If your turkey comes with a metal leg clip, you can use that too. Just undo one leg to thoroughly clean the turkey inside first. Then replace the leg in the clip. I'll clip the excess off like so. Next I'm going to turn it sideways and over here I'm just going to slide it down and all the way through. I'll set my platform on it over here like this, okay? And there's my strip rod coming out, and I'll just uh, lock it in, lift it up, and put it in the machine like this, slide it back, set the window up, turn it on, set it, and forget it. And now Ron shows us how to make baby back ribs using the kebab rods. Note. The spring end is on the left, not the right, with the baby back ribs. Now, it's important that this side be on the left side and the right be on this side over here. So I'm just going to slide it in over here like so, and then I'll just squeeze these together, snap that in. Now, if you notice down over here, we have our ribs and I've taken one on each side. It holds it like that now. It's going to take this side over here, and I'm just going to slip it in on one side and spring it on the other and just roll it like so and just slip it in over here. Take it and slide it back and now while that's doing that I'll barbecue it. You have rubberized gloves. I'm going to slip my glove on over here. And uh, I want you to know, though, you can use any kind of gloves that you may have in your house. And by the way, these gloves are, in fact, rubberized. Watch what I do here. I'm going to turn off my machine over here, and I'm going to slide this right under. The first thing I'm going to do is lift up and just take it out. It's as simple as that. Now, over here, I have 
my meat thermometer. You must check to see if in fact the meat is done. It's done, good. I'll take the meat thermometer out and just slide it off. The chicken comes right off and you are now ready to serve your chicken. Problem. Your chicken is done for time and temperature. However, the breast of the chicken is not as brown as you'd like it. The chicken has probably been loaded a bit off center. So, stop it when the breast is aligned in front of the heating element. And set the function switch to pause to sear. Set the timer for five minutes and you'll find the chicken breast is nicely browned. Now here I have a piece of beautiful piece of roast beef and I'm gonna just uh, sprinkle some nice stuff on here all over. Get some nice good spices on there. That's gonna be lovely, huh? Isn't that pretty? I think so. Okay, now, since I have it like that, I'm gonna take the spit rod over here and do not go in over here in the meat. That's beautiful meat. You don't want to do that. What you basically want to do, folks, is go in through this way. And so I'm just going to slide it through like so, and I'll just push it right through like that. I'll set it on the wheel like so. I'll put this on over here. It'll match up. I'll put it in the rest area. Slide it in the middle. Push it in the back, raise up the lid, set it, and forget it. Here we have a nine pound standing rib roast. It's been in for well over a couple hours now, and it's just running smoothly. It's very important that, as you see, the bones on the left be on the left side and not on the right side, so they could possibly hit the gear which causes everything uh, here to work. Problem, you can see or smell smoke because the food is hitting or coming too close to the heating element. If you don't center the food properly or load it properly or trim off the excess fat or if your food is too large, this could happen. Here's an example of a roast that was not loaded properly onto the spit rods. It catches on the heating element and burns. Always check on your food from time to time. If you hear a squeak as the machine goes around, put a drop or two of vegetable oil or olive oil on the gear wheel nub before inserting the spit rod assembly into the machine. Or use the end of a kebab rod dipped in oil and drop it onto the nub like this as the machine turns. Or you can even use a straw. But be careful. If you do it when the machine is turning, these parts get very hot. Discoloration. Some discoloration over time is to be expected when you work with hot food. It's normal, and it will not affect the function of the machine. On white machines, it gets slightly browner on the front of the machine behind the glass door, and sometimes on the steaming and heating tray. This is caused mostly by fat from roast beef. While it is not recommended, you can, after a while, if you want, return your machine for a nominal fee. The factory will refinish the surface for you. Ask customer service. You can line the bottom of your drip tray with a small sheet of aluminum foil. Be sure it's flat against the bottom to leave room for fat that drips off the food. You can't have any fat or grease build up on the grate cover, so please don't cover that with aluminum foil. It's made to drain the fat away down into the drip tray. On top of the unit, you can have the optional steaming and heating tray. When you open the top to check on your food, be sure to tip the tray lid so any moisture falls back onto the food and not onto the counter or the machine. Like this. And like this. When steaming fresh vegetables or frozen vegetables, we put a half cup water on each side of the bottom tray and then put the steaming partition on that. Here we have some beautiful beans and succotash. That'll be sensational. And by the way, as you can see, you can just 
put it on the top here, it stays on the top and comes out beautiful. And Ron, let's show the folks another feature on some models. There's a tie latch on the side. Use one of the elastic food ties, tie a knot about one inch down and slip it on the arrow shaped piece here on the side and then over the door handle. It helps hold the door in place when storing or moving it. But remember, always let the machine cool down before moving it. There are several accessories for your rotisserie and barbecue. Shown here is the giant vegetable and lobster basket. Here is the giant vegetable and lobster basket shown with two very large lobster tails and sea bass filet. And then we have the speed basket. It fits in the forward position near the heating element. Great for steaks. Sears them well and keeps them juicy inside. Call the number on the screen to order. Here's a new invention from Ron Popeil. It's a chili stew and soup pot. It fits right on top of your Showtime machine. You can use the same lid that came with your steaming and heating tray and heat all kinds of chili, stew, soup. There's a two and a half quart size and a four quart size. Ask the order desk about them. And here's another great idea from Ron Popeil. It's the round rib basket, designed solely to do all kinds of ribs, baby rack ribs, spare ribs, and it has patent pending rib hooks. You just slip them in the rib and attach them to the basket. It is guaranteed easy to use. Ask about this too, for the best ribs you've ever had. And I think Ron's new barbecue sauce recipe is about ready. So when you call, get some barbecue sauce to go with these rib baskets. And Ron has developed three new char rubs. They bring that real outdoor charcoal flavor right into your kitchen. Using the finest seasonings, you can make the finest food. This three-pack of char rubs includes Ron's original Chicago Steakhouse formula for steaks and roasts, Ron's barbecue char rub for chickens and turkey and hens and kebabs, and Ron's citrus char rub for seafood, fish, lobsters. Try all three. And now here are some cautions. Things to avoid when using your rotisserie and barbecue. Do not touch the glass on the top or the bottom. It's hot. When the glass is underneath, do not touch this. This is very, very hot. Don't touch the top. Don't touch the back. Always very hot. Never use spray. Never use spray inside the machine. Don't touch this. This is very, very hot, okay? Never grab that. You'll burn yourself. Never touch the sides over here. This is important. Remember, Always keep at least eight inches of space from any cabinet on the top, sides, and back. This is no. You're too close on this side, and you're too close up here. This is no. Hot. 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 Do not touch. Important. Keep out of the reach of children at all times. Don't let them reach up and touch it. Important, do not put charcoals or any foreign objects in the machine. Important, do not move rotisserie when it's hot or loaded with food.